Hey everybody, my name is Sarah Warren, and welcome to my podcast, Sarah Says for the Ryersonian. I got together with Ryerson University's Digital Community Facilitator, Amza Khan, to talk about the effects of social media on employment. We had a fascinating conversation about the issue, so check out what he had to say. I know for a fact that one out of three employers rejects candidates based on something they find out about them online. Um, what are some other stats that come to mind? Um, for instance, sorry to uh, interject, like no, what kind of things then would give an employer reason to not employ oh, wow. someone? Like for examples that you've heard of Yeah, a wide something. array of things. So lying about qualifications. Most notable example, there was an executive who uh, falsified his degree over at Yahoo. He said he had an engineering, a computer science degree didn't actually have that and he was unceremoniously removed from the company. That's mm-hmm. in the public eye, but it happens all the time, even here at the Ryerson level. Unfortunately, I, I hate to say, but we've received some applications where students have lied about their degrees to support um, the job they were applying for. They believe that having a degree that's more coherently indicative of a trajectory towards a particular job in a particular field necessitates lying about your degree, which it actually doesn't. I'm an English major, and most people confuse me for being a marketing major or a business major. No, I graduated with English literature. Um, there's really no need to falsify your degree or lie about your qualifications. They badmouthed a past employer, right? Notorious examples of people just saying uh, really obnoxious things on Twitter and Facebook and not expecting that to travel. Um, demonstrates poor judgment. So, I mean, if, if you have album after album of doing keg stands and spinning bongs, I mean, I have no problem with either of those, but I imagine that some of my older and much more uh, um, conservative colleagues would take issue with that. Okay. Um, so when employers sit down at a computer after getting a resume, what generally, have from your experience or what you've heard from employers, are the first things that they look at, that they search in the Google search engine? Right. I mean, I'll tell you personally what I search for. Um, I instantly look for some key pieces of information that will help me narrow down who you are specifically. So, I'll, for example, in, in the case of you, I hate to go back, use an example. And I totally stalked you before this. It's just, okay, it's that's a, fine. It's, it's, it's really a reflex. I'm sure, yeah, you probably just do that in general. I mean, I stalked you too. I was like, let's see what he's Stalker all about. Stalker culture, right? Exactly. Every time I go and Twitter, ask right? a question and I ask people, I'm like, did you stalk anyone today? And I see half the, the room, hands in the room go up. Mm-hmm. Did you stalk anyone in the last 24 hours? And everyone's hands go up. So it's a very much stalker culture. I think it's accepted to some extent. But to answer your question... The reflex for me is I first look at your name, Mm -hmm. and if it's a generic name, then I will supplement that with a comma, location, or comma, some relevant work experience. So in your case, it was Sarah Warren, Toronto, Ryerson. Those Mm -hmm. were my three things that I found, and I was instantly able to find you based on those three parameters. Mm -hmm. And then I'll see what's publicly available in the first page of Google results. Um, For me, that indicates if you are taking an active role in developing your digital identity, which you are, Mm -hmm. you've actually taken the time to invest in telling your own story rather than letting somebody else tell it for you. And time and again, I see that people don't tell their own story online and they leave me with bits and pieces, little breadcrumbs of who they are. And I have to infer a story based on the limited data that I have. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, that story is inaccurate because that person hasn't taken the time to audit themselves, look at themselves. So I look for that. Then I instantly go to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, Mm -hmm. Pinterest, Tumblr, Foursquare, so on and so forth. Um, and by the end of it, I know your dog's name and what you have for dinner. <laughs> so you know everything about me now. <laughs> Almost everything. There's Almost. Discussed. All right, so what would you say then are the top five social media don'ts? Number one, don't lie. <laughs> right? You will get caught. Social media is so transparent, and by virtue of it being social, there are people there that know you in your circles of influence, and they have concentric circles of friends that overlap. So you will get caught in a lie. Um, number two, there's no real reason to be negative online. Um, as there is no reason to be negative offline either. I think people should just generally be nice and kind and polite towards each other. Um, you it's wouldn't randomly courtesy. walk up to a person, <laughs> simple courtesy, you wouldn't randomly walk up to a person and insult them and tell them that, you know, they look ugly or something. I don't know what it is. I mm-hmm. like in social media to be either like a cocktail party sometimes or like an airport sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, a favorite, a like, or retweet is like going over to someone and shaking their hand or getting an autograph. Mm-hmm. But quite the same can be said if somebody's randomly picking on someone like Rob Ford. You've never met a Rob Ford in your life. You wouldn't yeah. walk up to him in an airport and be like, fuck you, Rob Ford. Right? Yeah. But people unfortunately do that. And I think that creates some negative energy and that people can feel it. Now, am I guilty of that? Yeah, every now and then I'll go on a rant on Twitter mm-hmm. or Facebook. The third thing I would say if, you wanna, if you're looking for a list that fits five criteria... Um, 
privacy settings, right? So mm -hmm. one thing, one 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 thing that I show students all the time, and and they're flabbergasted when they see this feature, is you have the option to review posts that you're tagged in and pictures that you're in on Facebook. Yeah. And it surprised me that most people don't know about that. I'll go in and I'll say, so do you have that feature where if you're tagged in a photo that it goes into a review queue that you can approve it before it goes on your timeline? And everyone's like, no, how do you do yes, that? Yeah, I have that. And half the time I'm like, hide. <laughs> Story no. of my life, yeah. right? It's like <laughs> half the stuff I don't let go on my... Monday morning, wall. and then yeah. there's pictures from Sunday night and Saturday, and you're like, whoa, I was doing that? What the fuck? <laughs> And for most people, it just shows up on their timeline. I'm like, wow, there's no quality control over here. Like, if you are... A, a the PR person for your life, you're doing a horrible job, right? This yeah. is something that I would expect from Amanda Bynes or Lindsay Lohan, not mm -hmm. from you, not from a Ryerson student. You know, I have higher expectations of you. <laughs> um, the fourth thing I would say, don't don't leave it at the discretion of other people to construct a story about you. Tell your own story by quite the inverse is what I mean. Um, if you don't do a job of auditing yourself and presenting yourself um, in a way that you want to be found, then you're going to leave it to the discretion of employers like myself to tell a story about you that may not be true. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing is be active online. Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell you how many people I see that just set up accounts because their professor told them to do so or someone said get on Vine or get on YouTube and then those accounts become graveyards and I think that's demonstrative of A, the supporting the fourth point but if you are going to work in a job that is media, that is uh, communications, journalism, PR, so on and so forth, you need to demonstrate a, a competency of the platform. And even if that isn't your primary job, I'm almost willing to hedge a bet. To, to, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet that in five to ten years, social media and communications, PR, marketing, is going to become the responsibility of everyone in the organization. Whether you're in accounting or pharmaceuticals, no matter what your function is, you will be a brand ambassador. So you're better off right now familiarizing yourself with these platforms and don't, don't be uh, uncoordinated about it. I ask the question to the room all the time and I ask them what is a brand and, and some people, in fact most people, um, don't really think of themselves as brands. They equate brands with a product or a service, Nike, Red Bull, Starbucks, mm -hmm. Microsoft, Apple, so on and so forth. But when I look and I say, you know, Sarah Warren, you're a brand, chances are Sarah Warren in the audience will step back and be like, whoa, I'm not really a brand, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just Sarah. But you are a brand and the same dynamics that you attribute to a brand are the same ones that you want to conduct yourself. Uh, uh, are the same sort of dynamics that you want to apply to yourself because really what a brand is is what people say about you when you leave the room. Think about a cup of coffee. Okay, so you've got a generic, bland cup of coffee, no logo on it, you just get it from the office, uh, you know, office kitchen, and you drink that cup of coffee, it's just caffeine. There's no feelings, there's nothing associated with it. You go to a Starbucks now, and there's an active process to create some sort of brand recognition or an experience rather. Um, there's an ambiance, there's music, there's scents, there's people talking to you, engaging in conversation, personalizing the experience. So every time you go to a Starbucks, you're accumulating these dopamine releases, these positive releases, so, uh, positive experiences, so that by the time it comes, uh, so, the, so the next time you're thinking about going to grab coffee, mm -hmm. you're more likely to walk into a Starbucks because of that positive association you have with it. And when you think about yourself as a person, would you not want to have the same impact with people around you? Would you not want to just be a, a contributor of... of, of uh, amusement, information, utility. You want to be unique, authentic, um, engaging, and you want people to think about you in a positive light. And I think that that's what people need to do when it comes to personal branding. Tell your story online. Amazing stuff. Thanks so much to Hamza. If you want to learn more about the effects of social media on employment, you can go to www.ryersonian.ca to read the full feature, get a list of social media don'ts, and read some of our favorite irresponsible tweets. Thanks for listening to Sarah Says. I'm Sarah Warren for The Ryersonian.